A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, Chapter 3, Knights of the Table Round, Part 2. The boy nestled himself upon my shoulder and pretended to go to sleep. The old man began his tale, and presently the lad was asleep in reality, so also were the dogs, and the court, and the lackeys, and the files of in-at-arms. The droning voice droned on, a soft snoring arose on all sides, and supported it like a deep and subdued accompaniment of wind instruments. Some heads were bowed upon folded arms, some lay back with open mouths that issued unconscious music. Flies buzzed and bit, unmolested, the rats swarmed awfully out from a hundred holes and pattered about and made themselves at home everywhere and one of them sat up like a squirrel on the king's head and pelled a bit of cheese in his hands and nibbled it and dribbled the crumbs in the king's face with naive and impotent irreverence. It was a tranquil scene, and restful to the weary eye and jaded spirit. This was the old man's tale, he said. Right so the king and Merlin departed and went until a hermit that was a good man and a great leech. So the hermit searched all his wounds and gave him good salves, so the king was there three days, and there were his wounds well amended, that he might ride and go, and so departed. And as they rode, Arthur said, I have no sword. No false. Footnote from M.T. No, oh, no matter, said Merlin. Hereby is a sword that shall be yours, and I may. So they rode until they came to a lake. The which was, was a fair water and broad, and in the midst of the lake Arthur was aware of a claw arm clothed in white samnite that held a fair sword in his hand. Lo, said Merlin, yonder is that sword that which I spake of. With that they saw damsel going upon the lake. What damsel is that? said Arthur. That is the lady of the lake, said Merlin, and within that lake is a rock. And therein is as fair a place as any on earth, and richly be seen, and this damsel will come to you anon. And then speak ye fair to her, and she will give you that sword. Anon withal came the damsel unto Arthur, and saluted him, and he her again. Damsel, said Arthur, what sword is that? That yonder the arm holdeth above the water. I would it were mine, for I have no sword. Sir Arthur King, said the damsel. That salt is mine, and if you will give me a gift when I ask it you, you shall have it. By my faith, said Arthur, I will give you what gift ye shall ask. Well, said the damsel, go ye into yonder bard and row yourself to the sword, and take it in the scabbard with you, and I will ask my gift when I see my time. So Sir Arthur and Merlin alight and tied their horses to two trees, and so they went into the ship. And when they came to the sword that was handheld, Sir Arthur took it by to the handles and took it with him. And the arm and the hand went under the water. And so they came unto the land and rode forth, and then Sir Arthur saw a rich pavilion. What signifieth yonder pavilion? It is the knight's pavilion, said Merlin, that he fought with last, Sir Pellinore, but he is not out, he is not here. He hath to do with the knight of yours, Sir Tight Eglam. And they have fought together, but at the last Eglam fled, and else he had been dead. And he hath chased him over on to Carleon, and there we meet him with him anon on the highway. That is well said, said Arthur. Now I have a sword, now will I wage battle with him, and be avenged on him. Sir, ye shall not do so, said Merlin. For the knight is weary of fighting and chasing, so that ye shall have no worship to have do with him. Also he will not lightly be matched of one light living, and therefore in my counsel let him pass, for he shall do you good service in short time. And his sons, after his days, also ye shall see that day in short space ye shall be right glad to give him your sister to wed. When I see him, I will shall do as you would advise me, said Arthur. Then Sir Arthur looked on the sword and liked it passing well. Which did I like to better, said Merlin, the sword or the scabbard? Me liketh better the sword, said Arthur. Ye are more unwise. Ye are more unwise, said Merlin, for the scabbard is worth ten of a sword, and while ye have the scabbard upon you, ye shall never lose no blood. Be ye never so sore wounded, therefore keep well the scabbard always with you. So they rode into Carleon, and by the way they met with Sir Pellinor, but Merlin had done such a craft that Pellinor saw not Arthur, and he passed by without any words. I marvel, said Arthur, that this knight would not speak. Sir, 
said Merlin. He saw you not, for he, uh, he had not seen you, he had not lightly departed. So they came up unto Carleon, aware of his knights were passing glad. And when they had heard of his adventures, they marvelled that he would jeopardize his person so alone. But all men of worship said it was merry to be under such a chieftain that would put his spurs into adventure as other poor knights did. A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, Chapter 3, Knights of the Round Table, Part 2. End of